Yo, 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 Osmodai here, going to play some games of Rena Lock on the ladder, gonna see how it's gonna go. So, might as well uh, jump into it, gonna try to explain a little bit about the gameplay, strategies against different matchups, so forth. So, let's see how it goes. Alright, Shaman, they're, obvi they're very often very aggressive, so we want to find uh, We want to find early game. Um, this can be good against the 7-7, seven, seven, but I don't think I can justify keeping it when I don't have any early game in hand. He kept a lot of cards, which makes me nervous. Reno is obviously really good, and Peddler is also really good. Okay. So the first thing we're going to try to do here is uh, we're going to try to identify what kind of Shaman it is. Is it uh, mid-range or is it... Um, is it the more aggressive variant? Either way, I think we're playing Peddler here to have something to contest the board. And I think we're taking Coil here because if he makes a trade here, like uh, he plays the 3-4, then we have Coil follow-up next turn. And then I think we're tapping as well. Having the Reno in hand is uh, gonna allow us to be more aggressive with our tap, which also is really good. This is interesting, so he's choosing not to trade as well. Which kind of... Uh... Ooh, we have the... Okay, so I'm gonna go... I'm gonna start with using the Coil here. We have the Hellfire for next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and tap here. Uh, cause I feel like we're in a, a decent spot either way. He can't develop anything that won't die to the Hellfire here. And then I have Heal Doom, uh, Heal Doom Sayer, uh, the turn after. So we're gonna make it to Reno pretty much regardless, I would say. But those are, uh, like, it's very important to make these, uh, evaluations. If he plays a 7-7 here, that's really good as well that he doesn't play a 7-7 here. I don't want to... Ooh, okay, now I'm actually thinking. Now I need to think a little bit. Because, um... If I think he can kill me here... I'm, I might have to go Earthen Ring instead of Doomsayer. We start by doing this... Always. And now I just have to try to... Figure out... Can he do... He's overloaded by one, right? He's overloaded by one. Four, five, six. So, many so I'm dead to... Yeah. I don't think I can go Doomsayer here because I'm dead to double lightning bolt. I'm all... I'm not... I'm added to flame tongue as well. Six, eight, ten. I'm not added to flame tongue, but I do want to play around double lightning bolt. Four. Yeah. So we just do this here. Doomsayer would have been slightly better because the probability of him ignoring the doomsayer and just going face is fairly high, uh, and then we get to play Reno on an empty board. But I'm making the judgment call right here that we are so far ahead that we don't have to go for the greediest play. It's interesting that he's um, considering trading here as well. It kind of puts me at a very safe uh, life total. So here there might be a consideration not to play uh, Reno. If we trade here, of course. I think this trade happens always. 
We're not dead to double lava burst, which is the m absolutely most damage he can do. So I think we just do this. I have no time for games. Oh yeah, and he's even overloaded for one. So. Oh wow, new card. I think this is uh, a perfect example where. A dude like Soulfire can just be so good to use. Uh, gives us complete uh, control of the board. And there we go. So, what made us win that game? Obviously, we had Reno, key. Uh, we decided to use it at a crucial point. We didn't use it too early, and we played around his outs to hit lethal before. Uh, we played Arena, so pretty simple win. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Like we also like that we tap through. We we could go for an aggressive tap just because uh, we have Reno in hand. You can tap a lot more aggressive if you have Reno. If you don't have Reno, you should probably manage your taps a lot better in the aggro matchup. Anyways, I hope uh, this video helped a little bit uh, on the shaman matchup. All right, let's see what we get. Gul'dan, Looks like it's another shaman. We already faced the shaman, so I guess we get uh, some solid shaman gameplay. 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 <laughs> uh, keep the doomsayer. Keep the imp gang boss. Doomsayer is just super good stall, um, and imp gang boss is just sticky. Allows you to interact with the minions over several turns. Alright, start with Squelch, that's number rule of School of Asmo, you gotta get that Squelch in on turn 1, if not, you're doing yourself a disfavor. Alright, Trog rules. If I coin Doomsayer, I can follow up with Tap, or I can follow up... I think I prefer coin Doomsayer here. Just being that this is gonna die. He's not gonna do anything on uh, 2, I can choose to tap or pair play mixture, I'm probably gonna tap. But slowing down the Shaman this much that he has to give up his Trog and he skips turn 2 is just a big deal. This here doesn't contest the board that much. The PO does uh, make it tempting to play it, because if he plays like a... Uh, no, I'm never going to use P.O. anyways, I'm always going to play Imp Gang on 3, so I think I tap here. But I would say I was tempted to do it. So we could see Ferals here. If he doesn't overload himself, he might play... the se uh, Like, he might play 7-7 seven, seven on 4. I'm always thinking about the 7-7 seven, seven on 4, because... Um, it's a game breaker. That card uh, wins, just wins games, so... Try to think about how you can lose games while playing them. If he's not overloading himself at all here. First of all, he had a really... Get a shitty opener. But it can all change because as I'm looking at my hand, I know I see that I do not have an answer for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Alright, there it comes. I do have an answer for now. So I think we're playing Cossack just here. We're doing this on 5. I want armor. Perfect. Perfect. That's really good for us. Incredibly good. We might not even use it now, but uh, this here just... We got AoE versus Shaman, you want that, we want life gain. If he ignores my minions, I'm just gonna go for the PO. That's problematic. 
That is actually problematic. Because it's gonna connect again. So the AoE is actually gonna hurt us more than it's gonna help us. So I'm going to siphon this next turn. Which means I just want to heal as much as possible Serve this turn. Or die. Which means I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm healing like this. And I'm playing this. So combined together here we have 7 heal. We can kind of... Um, we can kind of prevent the damage that's coming into us. The AoE is hurt, uh, at least he's clearing. Like I like that he's clearing here, being that... Um, being that uh, our spell will hurt us more than it will hurt him. Yeah, all of this is really good. This is just so good for us. Thank you. Now we have board, life gain, AoE, threats. All we need is a taunt here and we're set. Uh, so this brings us to our next fear, which is Doomhammer. After you dealt with the 7-7, you're most scared of Doomhammer. It's not a dim hammer. Alright, since he stacked up the board, I'm just gonna take the time to use the AoE here. And we pay we don't tap anymore. No reason to tap, we just get board. Font is perfect. I do feel that once you understand uh, the aggro matchups from Reno, it's um, it's a fairly good matchup for you. It, it, it takes some time to just realize how you tap, stuff like that, but uh, this game just came down to planning ahead, realizing what we're weak to, trying to set up the board so we could best deal with uh, the threats that are coming. Um, and it uh, worked out, so I hope this uh, guide or whatever you want to call it is will be helpful. To the loose, to the loose.